Oh, I, I have a viewer. Okay, so, um, this is going to be an interesting stream, I think, because this is the first stream on my new PC. I, I finally got it working. I spent, like, literally the last hour trying to get two screens working. Um, but it finally is, and it looks like everything's working. Um, I should be able to see me typing stuff. Um, and I also have a like a proper window manager set up. Um, so it should be should be cool. Anyway, we should be back. Um, I, I've had no time to kind of set up what, what we're gonna do. Um, where is it? Documents. Here we go. Right. So, basically, yeah, I've, I've got a new PC and it should be a lot better. Um, unfortunately, I have a, a horribly disgusting keyboard. Look, here we go. I can show you how horrendously old it is. Um, but yeah, so the keyboard might be a bit loud, but, you know, so be it. First stream on a new computer, it's going to be a bit weird. So, what are we doing today? Well, I thought, you know, um, we just got, like, opening and closing files working. Um, I haven't really had a chance to do much on Sapling, so it is basically as we left it um, before. It can read and write files pretty decent. But there was an old thing I was working on, which is um, before we had, like, in order to make a syntax tree editor, right, you need some kind of checking for what's a valid syntax tree. Um, because if I run sapling, compile, compile, oh yeah, I did. Um, ugh, oh wait, hold on, it's debug printing over my thing. Um, but th we have weird bugs in sapling where the what we really want is some kind of detection for like, oh, um, well, what's a valid tree? Because there's, like, in, in, in any kind of language, there is some kind of definition of a tree being valid or invalid, right? Um, so, for example, this is valid JSON. Um, true is valid JSON. Uh, but the empty string is not. So there should be no way that in Sapling we can move this, like, we can do edits and end up with the like the empty string or any other invalid tree um, and in sapling this is not the case we can do stuff like replace true um, and now we have well we have an object with true inside it like what <laughs> what does that even mean that isn't valid json um, so something is kind of not working um, in fact let me just uh, pipe this is how you pipe stuff into a file Okay, there we go. Um, now we don't have all of the log messages appearing in the same screen. Um, so, like, obviously as an, a syntax tree editor, like any structured editor needs some way to check, um, is the, the file in the buffer valid? Um, and whenever anyone changes the tree, you need to do another check to say, um, like only let them make a change if the tree is valid. So for example, um, if I do this, then I move down here and let's say I replaced this with a string, right? Like, obviously that's okay. Um, because in this position, we're inside an array. We had true here before. Now we have a string. That's fine. That's kind of obviously how JSON works. Um, and if we do stuff like, I don't know, uh, replace this with an object, that's also true. And we can delete it just fine. Um, However, we can't delete the root. Like, if we select the array and try and delete it, well, it's registering our delete. Like, it's registering what you're asking it to delete, but it's not doing anything. Um, and that's because deleting the root would result in, like, the empty file, and we've ascertained that that's invalid. Uh, so we're doing stuff like deleting the left-hand side of a, um, a key-value pair, and the right-hand side will also not work. Um, so if we come back here and replace this with a string, then that works. 
um, if we place it with an array or an object, like you can only have strings on the left hand side um, of a, a field. Um, and obviously somewhere there's a bug because uh, replacing a field with true results in an invalid tree. Um, but the kind of ethos of the, the checking that sapling does is that it's better to have as much stuff done in the compiler as possible, which is, you know, like, that's how Rust works. That's like the whole ethos behind Rust and it works great. Like you should do everything in the compiler where possible. Um, and to do this, some of those AST mod, uh, no, mod. Um, we have in here down a bit. Yeah, we have this trait, which is a pretty hefty trait, but this defines what it is to be a syntax tree. And the only implementer we have so far is JSON. And it, it's basically this enum here. Um, and we can see that like all of the specifics of JSON in terms of like how many children um, each type is allowed. So we have true as a, it is valid JSON, um, but true doesn't have anything. Like the only, you can't put any children inside true because true is just true. There's no associated value. Like there's no um, vec of pointers to more JSON. Um, Right, like we have here. So an array has as its children, um, we, we need to know it's an array and not an object, say, uh, and as its children, we have more uh, JSON objects. And there's already a bit of like lack of type checking here because uh, you can't just put, say, uh, a field, right? You can't put a field inside an array, um, but there's nothing in the compiler that checks this, right? Because um, JSON field is a completely valid JSON structure. So we actually could make an array with a field inside it. And um, I think this would work just fine. We can we could probably do it if we're really, <laughs> if we're really trying to break things. Um, uh, we have to Oh, okay, I, I, oops. Um, okay, I can't be bothered to, <laughs> I can't be bothered to intentionally try and break my program. But anyway, we basically got this idea where we encode into our data structure how many children each va uh, like JSON type is supposed to have. So um, a field, for example, has um, an array of two JSONs. Uh, can I share that a bit better? Yeah, there we go. Um, and like the compiler will check if, if we try and add a field to um, try and add something, say, so O for insert new child, say we insert an array into a field, then it, the compiler just, well, sapling just rejects it. Cause it's like, oh, well, there isn't even a way of like, we can't even add a thing to this array. And this is all very well, but it has, has issues and the issues are not really what I expected. And the issues actually come when you try and implement uh, different operations, right? Because we, we got to do stuff like replacing. Um, so if I want to replace this with a string, then I should be able to do it. And in this case, it's fine because we're just replacing something inside an array and an array can have anything in it apart from fields, which we can't create. So everything's fine. Uh, we can have another array, we can insert a string. This is all valid. But the code for replace has to explicitly handle like all of these weird cases. Like if we insert a child into true, well, you can't put children inside true. So that's like silly. And that is currently being done at compile time, but it makes the code for inserting and replacing really nasty. Um, yeah, here we go. So it's just like this, this fat load of edge cases. Um, so this is like, what even is this? Oh yeah, so this is, we're replacing something that like has a parent um, and then 
you see, like, how many indent levels deep is this? It's like, what, 10 indent levels deep? Like, this is insane. There's, a replace should just be you delete the cursor and then put the thing you replaced it with in its place, right? Um, because if I have true and I want to replace it with a string, well, that should be the same as uh, removing it and then inserting a string, right? If we can do that atomically as one operation, then that's great. Uh, let me grab a drink. Uh, and, but the thing is we can't do this because let's say we were replacing the value inside a field and remember uh, ISTJSON, right? So a field has a fixed length array inside it. And it says basically asserts at all times, I must have precisely two children, right? So we just can't implement um, replace as deletion followed by insertion because JSON would hate us for that because you know the, the intermediate step which the compiler still is still seeing um well it still has it has an invalid number of children uh, and we've worked so hard to make that not even representable in the language that we just can't implement replace like that um anyway you probably get the message of what i'm banging on about now which is that like this doing everything at compile time seemed like a good idea at the time, but when we started to implement more complicated things, it started getting like really weird um, and difficult. So, so basically what my plan is, oh, come on, Fim, why not X? Okay. Uh, my plan is to make, move all of this checking of like, oh, is the tree valid, just move all of that to runtime. Um, and we just rely on the fact that we check the tree every time the user makes an edit and, you know, therefore we can't make an invalid tree. Which is less, like, it's less nice than saying, oh yeah, like, it just cannot happen because the compiler won't allow it. But um, I think if it allows us to implement things simply, then that's a, a bonus. Um, and I did do, I started work on this a while back and <laughs> I did it so long ago that it like the, the, my branch and master branch have converged so much that it's basically impossible to reconcile them. So I'm basically starting again. Um, and I think I made a new mod, here we go. I, I started work on this and then decided I'd save it for the stream. Um, and basically what we are going to do is we're going to make the JSON specification, uh, like we're going to make a syntax tree instead of being this kind of thing where you have like, oh, you, you have an enum and then it has a vector of children. Like if it has, if it's supposed to have a variable number of children, then you put a vector inside it. Um, the, the, another thing that's weird, which I don't like, which is hopefully going to be fixed, is that we have another thing, right? Like we have two separate ways of representing this because when we're typing a command, we need to know um, what the thing is. So let's say I say um, replace by an array. Um, Sapling needs to go, oh yeah, well, what does A mean? Like, okay, well, A is an array, um, but we need to pass some like, way of saying, oh yeah, what do we replace with? And so we need another enum type that is uh, exactly the same. In fact, it's got all these, the same fields. It's got true, false, null, array, object. Yeah, so yeah, I would also like to see compile time checking, but like the compiler just physically can't check everything. Um, we either need to go down the whole like route of, oh, have tons and tons of associated structs, um, which it might be a valid idea, right? Like I, I'm not discounting that as a possibility. Um, it's just, it's not very, it's not particularly runtime extensible because you've got tons and tons of structures flying around. Um, and for the time being, I thought it would be easier. Um, I mean, like it would be less 
like I, I don't see how it would make the code any simpler. That's the other thing, um, because sometimes we want to make the tree invalid temporarily, um, like stuff it like in a replace. Um, that the whole reason this code is so janky is because uh, you can now insert you, you can insert a lot multiple things because we implemented counts, right? So you can say like insert three trues all in one go, um, and we can also say replace with three falses um, all in one go, and that starts getting really messy because ideally this would just be uh, like delete and then insert three falses, uh, which should be exactly the same, but we just can't implement it like that because if we create an object and then, uh, yeah, insert, oops, insert true. And then if we try and replace this with like replace three falses, then it obviously won't allow us to do it. But if we replace it with one false, then it is possible. Oh, well, yeah, so the the issue with the, the field. Um, yes, that would fix the issue with field, but it would make replace even more complicated. Um, because, well, the bug with field is basically happening because um, when I insert, this is, a, this is a bit of a rabbit hole, but I'm going to go down it anyway, because, um, like, honestly, streams are rabbit holes anyway. Um, so basically what happens is that when I was thinking about like, oh, how do you insert something into an object? Well, object actually like the only thing that can be a direct child of an object is a field, right? Um, but you don't want to have to say something like, oh yeah, insert a field and then insert a string into the left-hand side and then whatever you wanted to insert in the right-hand side. Like that's kind of silly. You want to just say, oh, insert true and have it automatically create the field for you. Um, but the thing is now you're in a weird situation where uh, like objects, uh, what are they called? Yeah, objects can only have fields as their children, but the keys you can use to insert, the things you can insert into them is different to the stuff that is allowed as a child, if that kind of makes sense, right? Because you could uh, insert false, which doesn't end up as a... Um, a direct child. You end up with this like implicit creation of fields. Um, and the issue is that replace is just checking the same thing, right? So it's saying like, oh yeah, replace false. Oh well, false is possible to insert. So it does the replace naively um, rather than the way I wanted to do, which is to say, oh yeah, well delete and then insert a false, right? Which would have the same effect. Well, it would have the correct effect, which is to um, not invalidate the tree. Um, and okay, like you could force, um, you could push all of the methods down into JSON. So you could have like, um, you would say, oh yeah, well, we have uh, AST mod. All right, so we do have a bit of this. Yeah, so I, I like the implicit key as well. Um, and I, I was thinking, because key value pairs are just a bit like janky, really, in this kind of syntax tree. Um, because it's kind of unintuitive, like whether or not you should have kind of... Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's much better user experience at the cost of being very janky to implement. And um, or it, not janky, it makes the job of the programmer, the tool maker, a lot more difficult than the job of the user. But the thing is, tools are written once, or like, hopefully tools are written once, and used tons and tons of times, right? So it is definitely a valid trade-off to make, it is definitely the best thing to do to make the programmer's job more difficult to make the user's life easier. Um, sometimes it's not the case, like adding <laughs> that, that's a kind of slippery slope to go down because adding complexity is actually making it worse for both parties, but it feels like uh, you're just making it better for the users. But yes, I like the uh, implicit insertion. So what we could say is we could have like 
in in the actual JSON uh, trait, which is like oh, so AST trait, which is what all the syntax trees will have to implement. We could have something. Um, in fact, I think we do have. So we have the children, which is like oh yeah, get me a slice of the children, um, and we do have replace child already. Um, so I guess we could. Um, hold on, wait. So replace child. Is replace child. Hmm. Okay, so I thought so. Replace child was like there to allow the syntax tree, like specification, to intervene um, when something is added. So it can say, "Oh yeah, you're doing a replace." Well, okay. Well, this replace we're replacing something. Um, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I did mean to do that. Oh crap. Um, right. So undo a bit here. So if I'm replacing this with false. Um, then this will give the array around it, sorry, object, time to, you know, like intervene and say, hey, you're replacing something. Like, you can't do that. Uh, let me just cheekily create a new field around it. But yeah, it, it's still like, um, so that would be fixed by making more compile safety. Um, what was the other thing that I, the other reason why I wanted to do this? Oh yeah, because um, doing that doesn't actually simplify. Um, like I, I don't think it makes the code any simpler to have that kind of system, right? Because if we're if we're pushing everything down to JSON, so we're like, oh well, you could have this like weird stuff happening. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is making any sense, but like. We want to implicitly do things um, when replacing things. So we push all of the code down into replace child. Um, and this is not allowed to fail currently, but we could imagine that we're like, I don't know, replacing some child of true. And it's like, oh, well, hold on, what? Uh, true has no children to start with. So how do we even do that? Uh, so we'd have to like return some result. Um, and then literally everything would have to like I implement this like every single ast trait would have to implement it and do exactly the same thing right because they would all match on themselves um oh yeah we need to to make the compiler happy um it would just be a massive match statement saying like oh yeah um is it true uh Uh, yeah, I suppose that's technically about like that is valid to just block replacing. Excuse me. Ah, uh, yes, it won't compile. I should probably cap the log. Okay, well. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, well this is. Um, we should just undo this. Yeah, perhaps we could block that. Um, I mean, it does feel a bit like janky because insertion, um, like you should be able to insert as a child, like you should be able to insert as a sibling, say um, a string, and that should be fine. But you're we're, like, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like replacing it should be allowed because inserting in the same place is allowed and like this is surely one of the same. Because if you, if we implement, um, because we can do stuff like in inserting three trues creates three fields to replace it. So I'm kind of like, well, replace should be implemented as deletion followed by um, uh, what is it? Yeah, d deletion followed by insertion. Um, so I if we were to, like, oh, I drew. Um, you do? 
but I don't know, like purely from the user's perspective, I think it's very, um, it would be much nicer to let the user think about uh, insertion as simply, uh, sorry, replace as the, the behavior of replace is exactly the same as um, deleting and inserting again. Um, because the, there's a, um, a thing in Vim where, I, where you can replace characters with R. Um, so let's say I replace S. Um, and then I can do, add a count to that. So I can be like three replace S. Um, and that's kind of weird uh, already, right? Because if, if we do RS, 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 like we replace characters three times, then we get, we replace this, the same character multiple of times. Um, but what Vim's done is said, oh yeah, well, that's kind of silly. So if you do multiple replaces, then it should just move the cursor on. Um, and that's what sapling does too. If we do, um, if we would do a like count in front of the command, so like to replace string, uh, then it does multiple replaces. Uh, and you, we can be kind of crazy. We can be like to replace three strings. Um, and then it like replaces two each. Oh, hold on, oh, new chat message. Uh, in that case, don't allow inserting values into objects. But I don't understand because we are, um, we already don't allow that. Like you can't even, th there's no key for object, right? Um, uh, sorry, there's no key for a field. Um, largely because I don't want this issue to occur. Um, I mean, like, we could, as the, like, experiment of this stream, we could just, like, try and implement that that way. But, like, mm, I don't know. Also, it becomes, like, I, I want the, uh, like, the code outside AST. From like a, a purely like how easy is sapling to maintain? Um, I feel like most of the argument for doing safety in the compiler is a maintenance issue, right? Like if you can get the Rust compiler to check for you that all of the things you expect to hold are valid, um, then it is like it, it's much more guaranteed than if you just try and do it in runtime and you might forget and then you'll get horrible to track down bugs, um, typically. Um, so like the user doesn't even know whether or not stuff is being checked at compile time or runtime, right? They can't tell unless the runtime checks are really slow, in which case they will t uh, notice. All they know is Oh, okay, yeah, so not doing implicit um, like the cleanest code, like the cleanest thing would be to not allow you to do that. Um, particularly as we have this kind of, um, we kind of treat, uh, yeah, let's just open a new file. So we kind of treat an object as like object. And then as a child of that, we have some number of fields, right? And then the fields don't have any associated um, state. They just have, a key is the left child and then a value, right? Um, which could be its own tree. So it could go off. Um, and having this kind of structure here is kind of, like, I'm not sure whether this is the best one because you could have, um, a lot of the time, the, like the data structure that you can put, the, the syntactic structure you can put in the key is usually very simple, right? In JSON, it is literally like it's a string um, and in in other things that might be an identifier right like you're doing you're writing xml and like uh attributes are key value pairs um you want to have stuff like um like html um or like yeah a href equals thing um and in this case we still have a very simple key um and then a potentially more complicated value. 
So I, I was thinking, like, why don't we just attach the string into the field structure? Um, and then we have the key value pairs only have one child each. Um, that was my thinking, because uh, I got into a kind of friendly argument with a, um, a friend of mine. I was explaining Zapling to them, like back when it was like maybe a week into development and like everything was really crazy um, and most of the stuff didn't work. <laughs> and it, it was quite funny, really. We just like, we, we started this, discussing this project and then the only thing they were worried about was whether or not my like interpretation of key value pairs was correct. It was just like, oh yeah, that seems okay, but like why, like I don't think this is the right way of representing key values. Um, and my thoughts were that the whole like runtime system, actually hold on, this is just as easy to do uh, with everything at compile time. Because you just have like, um, Uh, let's just make new jason.rs. We just have like struct, uh, um, I don't know, like field. Uh, and then it has like key string. Uh, and then like value is, I don't know, what would this be? It would be like um, json value. I think it, it would be, and then we would have something like enum json value and you see, you know, like either um, true or it's false or it's an object like vec does this make sense? Uh, yeah so then yeah this is a vec of fields and so on hmm I mean so yeah, for the sake of like doing something, <laughs> like actually writing some code, um, the stream. I'm, I probably think that there's st at least stuff to be learned by um, implementing it like this, right? Like, so trying to move everything to runtime. We don't have to merge it into master. Like, we can just try. Um. Yeah, so it, it definitely does make more sense um, if we... Ah, yes, I can do this really nicely now because if I want to spawn a Firefox window, um, then I just do it in the same screen and it's great. Um, okay, so yeah, this is how the Rust compiler implements it. Um, well, let me... What is Rust C? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Compiler. Is this where everything is? Yeah, here we go. So we have like the Rust syntax tree. This is like the file where Rust's syntax tree is stored, right? Um, and it's basically like, the, there isn't like one, un, one overarching trait implementation. It just has like tons and tons of like individual data structures, like you have label um, ident formatter. Um, oh, I've got a new, a nice font as well that like combines, um, what are they called? Ligatures. There we go. Um, so like the, the arrow is fancy. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm not, I'm not so sure that this is the right way to go for something where the, the syntax trees are heavily mutable, right? Um, because the Rust compiler, compilers are very simple. They have a very simple pipeline, right? You feed them immutable text, or at least immutable as far as the compiler is concerned. It looks at some text. It parses a syntax tree out of the text. Um, and because the text is never going to change whilst the compiler is running, the syntax tree is also never going to change. So it can, it can happily build up this... Yeah, so, mm, yeah, I guess that's a valid point. Like moving moving things to runtime is a very 
um, what's the word? Like, it's a very short-sighted, easier thing to do. Um, it's kind of like the whole um, Python thing, right? Like, oh, hey, Python is great because I can write code quickly. Um, but, like, okay, yes, you can write code badly quickly. Um, that doesn't really help anyone. Like, like, God help me if I was maintaining a four million line Python program. Like, how would you even do that? It's just insane how you would get that oh, to work. Um, oh, hold on. No. Ah, here we go. So, oh no, oh no. Oh crap, window manager chaos is happening. Um, okay, we're back, okay. <laughs> Insanity happened, I've, like, I've never tried to use this setup with two monitors before. Um, and I just managed to get everything. Oh, anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, let's... O-T-O-H. Having... So like, yeah, so we're having horrible architecture. Yeah, okay. Um, but even nicely structured Python programs are like difficult to maintain because um, doing any kind of refactoring is just a pain without a compiler. Um, and like the more, the more anal the compiler is, the better. Um, anyway, let's like, in, in, enough rambling. Let's actually write some stuff. So maybe, um, Yeah, so like, here's the other thing, right? Because from the perspective of the rest of the code, like editor, um, it needs to know, because um, like from the, the other thing about the Rust compiler, right? That makes it possible to do this kind of thing. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed that it works. Okay, right. Um, the, the reason why they can do this thing, um, I'm not even sure how many data structures there are in here. Um, where's my mouse? Actually, a mouse. Here we go. Um, like, there are so many data structures in here. Um, and the only reason... Yes, yeah, definitely. I've... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think most people learn from experience that um, tight connected, like, tightly connected code is... Uh, a very, uh, like, it's one of those things where it becomes an absolute pain only once it's too late. Um, because as soon as tightly connected code becomes enough of a pain to make it worth fixing, the damage is done, right? Like, <laughs> you're, you're in for a really uphill struggle trying to maintain a code base that size. Well, a code base big enough to make bad architecture really bad is already too big to like restart easily. Um, anyway, yeah, so my, my, back to my point about this, right? Which is that um, it's all very well for a compiler to be able to do this kind of thing um, because it only has to support precisely one language. It, the Rust compiler has to support Rust and that's it. Um, but let's say the Rust compiler was actually a Rust and C compiler, right? Like how would you, how would you best do that? Because you'd want all of this like craziness here, right? Well, not craziness. This is like, th this is a completely logical way of laying it out. Um, but this is what, like, this is a, how long is it? Okay, so it's 3000 lines of Rust code. Um, you'd have like 3000 lines of this for Rust. And then you'd have another file maybe with 3,000 lines of C data structures, um, right? And that would be, that would be great, but let's say the rest of the code, you want the rest of the code to not need to know very much about the, like exactly what language it's editing, right? You don't want the whole editor to be custom built for say Rust. Um, you, it needs to be like for Sapling to fulfill its intended purpose, it needs to not really care that much about the language it's editing. 
Um, and I'm not sure really how you could do that. Uh, yeah, so Martin says exactly what I learned from my mistake in previously experimental co code is to have to find at some point. Yeah, yeah, so at some point you have to start thinking about good design. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I feel like sapling is not, um, sapling doesn't do enough yet. Um, I mean, like, I, I guess kind of now, like the whole point of this refactoring is to try and get a good design, right? Um, oh, also, uh, speaking of being on GitHub, um, uh, I have an open pull request with uh, the basically adds like a code map of sapling, which is basically me like saying, oh yeah, this is how uh, the architecture works right now. Um, that was probably a complete aside, but there we go. Right. Yes, that, that's, that's what I think. Like definitely, I think as far as next languages go, I think the next easiest language um, is XML, probably. Because XML is more complicated than JavaScript, but, no, sorry, J JSON. Nothing's more complicated than JavaScript. Um, and, yeah, and, and it, but it's still relatively, um, it's very formulaic. There isn't a lot of stuff you can have, um, but it's certainly more complicated than JSON. Um, and my thinking is that it's going to be, it's going to be really hard to to do something, right? Because um, let's say we have XML, right? We've got XML, uh, we have struct XML tag, um, and this has, well, in, inside it, it has um, some number of attributes. And then this is vec XML at, at Atra. All right, and then it has some number of children. And well, uh, XML tag, except that it's not, right? It's XML uh, because, uh, oh, come on. Uh, because XML is actually, can also have text. So we're like, ah, well, we have enum. Well, XML is either a tag Yes, definitely. Some problems are like only arrive when you try and implement things. That's kind of like the nightmare of trying to make like well architectured software is that Oh yeah, I didn't even notice the typo. <laughs> Classic like um uh, yeah, so anyway, tag, we could have text, uh, which is just some string. All right, so we're going to end up with a ton of these. Like, we're going to have struct um, XML attribute, and it's like, got, like, key string and value string. So for XML, I think we have um, three structures, right? And XML is a, is a relatively simple language, but what happens if we have... Like, we've got to have JSON somewhere. Um, so, like, how do we... Well, let's say it's true, false, and then array. Right, JSON. Okay, so this is, like, I don't know, a, a super naive... Like, this is a pretty simplistic way of implementing a subset of JSON and XML, right? But the thing is, like, how do you tell the editor what it's editing, um, because you've got to store the node somewhere. Um, like, I, I think it's kind of dumb to try and make the editor work without a um, some kind of way of reusing nodes in storage. Um, I'm sure, do we get, uh, do I have the, Oh no. Uh, so basically, like, 
uh, yeah, pretty much the way um, Sapling currently stores nodes, you probably know this by now, is it stores them in like a, a, a DAG. So if I were to um, have two different trees that both contain like true, um, then they would share the same value of true. So you would just have like two pointers um, from different roots. So you'd have like roots at the top and then um, you'd have, I, I don't know, like maybe some other trees that are specific to that specific, that particular edit. Um, and then they would both share, they would both point down to the same true. Um, and that becomes a bit of a pain in this kind of setup because, um, okay, well, it, it's not too much of a pain because you just store pointers, right? So you, you like have this, you point to an XML tag. Um, oh no, yeah, so a tag can only be one thing, but we it, here we have a load of attributes and well, the attributes might be copied, um, like the attributes might be shared between other things. Um, and then uh, instead of children, like we might want to share the children as well. So we, we need something like this. Um, and the Rust compiler will immediately complain because we need to know how long these last. Um, right, so like obviously we say, oh, they're all the same lifetime. Um, because at the moment, uh, Sapling stores everything in an arena. So um, every all of the nodes get deallocated at the same time. Um, and ba basically what I'm worried about is like, okay, we basically pretty much have to store stuff in an arena. Um, Somehow we've got to do something smarter than just um, making an edit by cloning the entire tree and then making the edit. Um, we kind of need to share memory somehow um, and not just naively store all of the possible edits. And like that's that's kind of hard to do with a structure like this um, because I mean I guess you just you have a custom size arena allocator. Maybe that's the easiest way around. Hmm. Yeah, perhaps it is like we just store all of these data structures in an arena. Um, and then I guess all of these would need to individually implement stuff for replace, right? Like there'd be some uh, trait AST and we'd implement this for XML and it would be like, uh, what's the name? Well self is static extra and this is uh well um but yeah anyway we have we have some trait because we need to have some trait so that the rest of the code is generic over the tree type um and then we'd have to implement this for every single one of these um and i just think we'll end up with tons and tons of repeated code like this uh, because every single tree, uh, like every single language will have to have maybe hundreds potentially of different data structures uh, to make up its syntax tree and they'll all have to implement this. Like, I, I can't, I want to see another way around it, but I just kind of can't see how it would work. Um, also, my throat is like starting to hurt and I don't have any more water. I might just nip and be back for a second, in a second. I'll be back. It's 25 and I'll leave. And I'll see how many seconds it takes. Okay. I mean, perhaps uh, instead of deciding, like forcing sapling down one of the like runtime or compile time paths, we should just try and like implement XML. Maybe that's a better strategy. I mean, what do people want to do? Like out of, 
I mean, I guess we don't have much stream left unless people want to carry on. Like, I'm quite happy to keep streaming, but, you know, I don't want to, like, <laughs> stream for six hours or something crazy like that. Um, I mean, unless anyone specifically expresses some strong preference, I'm just going to go with uh, implementing XML, which is not really what... Um, yes, definitely, like, you, we should have some kind of, oh, Vim, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, definitely, we need to use grammars at some point, um, because they're just the way forward. Like, <laughs> I can't really see a way around it. Oh, excellent, okay, that's good. I, I'm glad you like the idea of trying XML, because so do I. Uh, in fact, we should probably... What's... the diff. Uh, right, okay, so I we just need to move on to a different branch from... Okay, so runtime checking is the same as master. All right, uh, git checkout branch add xml support. So, right, we need to stick with the old system, right, because uh, we need to implement xml as some kind of uh, some kind of enum like JSON. Uh, right, let's make a module. Make sure that Rust adds the file mod XML. That should work. And then, oh. Oh, really? Do we have... Oh, okay, yeah. We need to... AST... Well, like, let's just clear up all of the old stuff. Um, new JSON, new mod. Oh, no, no, you don't want to get RM. Just RM. Right, and now cargo build should succeed, except it might not because missing documentation. Uh, yeah. What does Norm for JSON say? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, specification. So we're going to need, um, like, let's uh, avoid parsing for the time being. We're going to need some kind of enum of uh, what valid nodes in an XML tree are. So this is, well, what are the possible things? Well, we have just some text. Um, in fact, yeah, so we do text string. Missing documentation. Oh, come on. A single node XML syntax tree. Just a string of text. Oh, God, yeah. XML is actually more complicated. In fact, uh, we should probably. Um, Look at the XML spec. Extensible markup language. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, how, where's my mouse gone? Ah, okay, something weird is happening with the window manager and my mouse keeps disappearing if it goes off the edge of the screen. Hmm, hmm. Now, <laughs> perhaps I don't really want to look at this. Oh, oh, what? 
Hold on, do we have a... Uh, excuse me. Ah, oh, no, it looks like... Okay, let's see if anyone's already made a grammar thing. <laughs> oh, this is better. This is what we want. Right. Uh, well, actually, this is still really complicated. Oh, okay, so actually, most of the comp complexity here is just handling Unicode, isn't it? So... What? Okay, this is too hard. I'm going to do it myself and add things when we go along. Uh, right, so we've got a comment. Uh... Uh, yeah, let's keep our comments nice. Uh, yeah, so we need comment. And comment contains stuff. Um, That is how you write comments. It's <laughs> exclamation mark bang dash dash, right? Uh, I'm going to ignore dog types. I know they appear everywhere. But uh, we have tag. Oh, so we have attributes as well, which is like. really need a new keyboard this is <laughs> I don't know how old this keyboard is but it's just unbelievably noisy and unbelievably difficult to type on it's like almost like a typewriter uh, so this is Wait, how do you attributes work they're like um, key as a string. Oh yeah, it's equals value. String value. Mm. That's annoying. Can I be like looks like uh, well, how do we how do we just stop uh, rust doc from trying to uh, <laughs> I just want to skip a doc comment I've done this before okay fine wait well let's I, I give in, I'm just going to actually add a comment. I mean, this is literally like the dumbest comments the world's ever seen, but, you know. Uh, what else do we have? We have text comment. Tag, we have... Uh, 
and that's going to be open bracket uh, and then it's name so it needs a name and then comment uh, atras and then it's children and then closing bracket name right so tag yeah I mean like that's a valid strategy like if you're I definitely think it's better to over comment than under comment but like uh, I think for code bases that end up getting really big and have to be read by other people uh, like comments should be comments should impart something some knowledge that the code doesn't um, uh, value oh no it's name is a string atters is a vec oh. Ah, uh, yeah, and we need a type parameter. Oh, wait, we need children as well. Oh, hold on, hold on. I think some of my greps did do this. Yes, you just, okay, yeah, right. Let's just wrap this in and then allow missing docs. Uh, oh, that works, right, excellent. That's what I wanted. Um, all right, so we've got a tag. Is this, I think this might be everything that we need in order to support um, stuff that isn't doc type. Right, I can't think of anything else. And yeah, and key value pets are simply strings. Okay. So now we need to use super we need to do this and ah this is going to be painful we need to ast Oh yeah, we need to do the classic uh, derive debug clone eek partial eek hash. Oh, is this happier? Default. Ah, yes, because we need to know what the default XML is. Um, For XML, well, default. What, what do we do? Return. I mean, what even is the? <laughs> uh, well, so with this with this setup, it would be straight up impossible to statically ensure that attributes are only valid inside a tag. Um, However, if we did the whole thing from a, like, having multiple structures set up, then um, it, it would just be kind of trivial, right? Uh, 
uh, <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't even know what the, the default XML should be because I'm sure in the specification of XML, you have to have a root node. Like you can't just put some text. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, this is dot to owned. Missing. Oh, Atras. Back new. Children. Back new. No, so just put empty. No children, no comments. Oh my word, this is it. Oh my word, do I need to implement all of these? What? Um. <laughs> okay, why did I make this so hard for myself? Well, type format style, there isn't one, is blank. Missing children. Well, ah, what do we even do at this point? Like, what's the children of a tag? Because we've got attributes and we've got like legit children, which is like the body. Oh, yeah, th this should be called body. Hold on. Oh, this is new. This is cool. This must be a newer version of NeoVim to the one I had. Uh. Uh. Oh, I'm so. <laughs> Got so overexcited that I didn't. What was I even going to call this body? There we go. Oh what? That's very fancy. I didn't know near them to that. Uh, yeah. So we need like a class, which is going to be a pub enum class and it's going to be exactly the same as this except nothing has any um, yeah so we, we don't have any um, parameters to anything I'm getting tired uh, is class right uh, <laughs> this is a lot of stuff Two char. Yeah, gonna be match. Oh, hold on, I made a macro for doing this. Right, so it was like this goes to T for text. Comment goes to C. Oh, 
Oh, nice. We've got a collision. Um, I'm going to call it tag G. Capture it goes to Did this code just work fine? Okay, where is this macro defined? That's the first port of call. Okay, right, so it defines. So it defines a thing called class. Bruh, like, what? I don't understand. Like, I, I've literally got the same code. Hold on, let's... Excuse me, what? Like, how is this any different? Oh, oh, wait, I understand. I fat thumbed it. There's a dot here. Oh. Yeah, boys. Right. Okay, so we've got class. That's working. Okay. The keyboard is being frustrating. Uh, right, okay, so um, for the time being there aren't any, there's no way, we can't parse, so there's no way for it to get a parse error. So parse error is thing. Right, so parse to arena. Um, well, let's just return the unnamed error that we had. So we need to use crate. Ah, oh, what you mean I need to implement this? Ah, we really need to make it easier to implement new languages. I had like no idea it was this going to be this hard. Um, also, um, I want to test something out. Since this is going to be going to take a while, I want to see how well Minecraft runs when I'm streaming. Uh, because if it, it works fine, then I'll stream a lot. I'll like stream myself playing Minecraft. I mean, like once I get a better keyboard, obviously. Um, Uh, who votes that we play Minecraft? Because <laughs> I feel like this is going to take this is going to take a hell of a long time to uh, get this code going. I 
mean, I, right, the, until I get. I can never tell, like, whether or not, um, <laughs> whether, whether or not, like, I'm not saying answers because it's the, like, because stream delay is just so long. Um, you know, it's probably, like, the easiest thing to do at this point, um, as far as, like, I mean, like, so I, I'd like to get this finished because, like, you know, I, I, I kind of like, um, can we not, no, we can't derive display. Uh, yeah, because, like, uh, cause, so I'm all in favor of finishing things on stream, right? Like, starting to do something and then, like, going through and finishing it because that, like, makes a good stream, in my opinion. Um, but <laughs> the thing is, like, this is not going to be done anytime soon. Um, so it, it makes me think that we may as well quit whilst we're ahead and, or <laughs> maybe quit whilst we're not behind and do something more interesting. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, I need to, I want to test, uh, how fast Minecraft runs, uh, when I'm streaming because on my laptop it was basically unplayable and if I can play Minecraft whilst live streaming then that like I'll be, I'll be able to live stream that which like you know I probably won't use my YouTube channel for that yeah I mean like my computer is <laughs> if I say so myself a bit of a beast uh, because I don't know like I had no interest in making it like flash funny colors and always just like I'm going to buy like the most bang for your buck components I could find uh right let's I'm gonna play Minecraft I I've had enough of doing this I think like next next stream or like the next thing I'll do on sapling is to try and get things parsed from grammars because um like this is going to be a nightmare. Like, a lot of this stuff, uh, like, uh, what is this? Like, this is display tokens. Um, like, th this is just, like, how do you display the thing you've parsed? And then, um, oh, oh, well, yeah. Um, oh, I, <laughs> I would gladly, if you feel like implementing XML yourself, um, that would be great. Like, one of the problems I have right now is that I just have, um, I just have too many projects because I have, like, Sapling is kind of the biggest, biggest scoped project, um, but I have another project called Wheatley, um, which actually has users, like, it has, has tens of people using it, um, at least, like, possibly hundreds, I don't know how many people actually like actively use it um and so i ha like i have to spend time maintaining that because people use it uh and then i have my third year project which i'm doing as part of my degree um so i have to maintain put time into that as well and like i don't know i just like split quite a lot of ways at the moment um and there are a few other side projects that are nearly finished and then once they're finished like they are projects that finish if you see what i mean like I feel like sapling is unlikely to ever get to a state where I'm like, ah, oh, it's done. Like, no more effort is required. Whereas the, like, 200-line Python scripts I was working on have not yet got to that stage. Right. Uh, what was my keyboard shortcut for Minecraft? I think it was this. It was stonks. Okay. Now, let's see what happens. Oh. 
Um, so if I just boot up a new world, Um, well, sound is not working. Well, then are you getting... No, you're not getting sound either. Um. Music and sounds. Right, well, so... The, okay, so that's good. So the game is definitely producing sounds, right? Oh, and it's running at nice, smooth frames. Oh, wait, so you can hear. Oh, that's right. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so literally I'm the only person who can't hear what I'm doing. Is that basically the upshot of this? Um, okay, hold on. I think, can I default screen that? Okay, right. And then if I switch to another thing, I can, uh, do I still have, oh, yeah, I do. Um, Arch Linux. Uh, what is even the way? Uh... Okay, yeah, no. So the the sounds are working. It's just that I unplugged. Uh oh. Oh crap! I've done it again. Okay. Uh, it looks like. Let's... Hold on. So where's? Oops. So where is Minecraft? Hold on, what? Where's Minecraft gone? Uh, right, so... Where's the, the reprocess? Yeah, Minecraft's so cool now. Um, is it kill? Oh, I need to, it's, it, for somehow, for some reason, like Minecraft just really doesn't play well with um, my, like with the window manager. It's just like seemingly that the window manager and Minecraft hate each other. Uh, where is it, kill? Two one seven nine nine. Oh, good, and a load of memory gets removed, freed. Okay. Um, so, how do I get my? <laughs> I can't remember what what audio device thing did I install. <laughs> Uh, this is fun. Hold on, where the firework noise is coming out of my monitor? I think they might have been. Uh, what was my thing? Uh, Oh, it was this. Here we go. Output devices. Hello. Ah, so it was, it was playing to my screen. All output devices. Okay, so yes, I do want to take input from this.
Hey, okay, right. Okay, so I can't hear anything from there. Um, okay, so that's working again through my headphones. Let's get rid of this and open Minecraft again. Oh, two copies of Minecraft. We don't need the second one. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, jeepers, this is so loud. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll just have to deal with it being loud, I think. Oh, this is better. Okay. All right, okay. Come on. Okay, well, I literally... <laughs> okay, the game is so loud, this is insane. Um, I guess it's... Is it about the right volume for you guys, I guess? Hold on. Oh, it's nice to not be just instantly killed by things. Oh, wait, now you can't hear. Oh no, right, that's it. Like, why, Minecraft, why do you behave like this? Yeah, no, I can. Uh... Okay, right. Oh. Oops. Okay, I really need to know how to get Minecraft back without killing the game all the time. Oh, the game has crashed. Cheers. Cheers, fam. Alright, let's play again. Hopefully the sound should work this time. Because, like, this is kind of crippling if I can't alt-tab out of the game. Oh, yeah, there we go. Except that the game is really loud and I'm not. Uh, music and sounds. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right, this is better. Okay, so... I think... No, so why is... Why is the game only running at... Um... Yeah, so this, this is weird, because the game is seemingly... Oh my god, it's... Oh, whoops, wrong button. It's still really loud, though. Music and sounds. Okay, here we go. Is this... This must be probably a better balance, right? Um, Come on, let me fly. Um, so I, I'm playing this in a 144 hertz monitor. So hold on, if I get, just whack up the max frame rate. Right, this is more like what I was expecting. This is fun. I do love being in creative mode. Oh. oh, this is fun. Even just like... <laughs> okay, anyway, this is my testing world. The world I actually want to test, although I don't have rockets at the moment. Oh, wrong thing. Is... <laughs> I've been playing in hardcore a while recently. Here we go. So this is like my normal survival hardcore world. 
which should also be running at a decent frame rate. Yeah. I mean, it, it's worse because it, like, has more things and the render distance is quite high. Um, but yeah, this is what be, would be what I would stream. Because, um, like, I, I have plans. I'm not sure what... Oh, yeah, I know. I was flattening spawn. That's what I was doing. Um, but I can go and show you guys seeing as I'm here. You might call the stream after that. Okay, right. And I do have... I have three rockets. Okay, I need... Um, yeah, so the thing about hardcore, like, for those who haven't played Minecraft, the thing about hardcore over survival is that if you die once in hardcore, you can't respawn. So, I've got, what's this, uh, 310 days into the game uh, without dying yet. Where is, oh no, I'm really low on gunpowder. Okay. Nine of them. Crafting. Okay, that'll do for now. Right. The new nether is really scary as well. I'm like... Ah, oh, fine. I'll just swim. Okay. Okay, right. This is my, like, nether area. The ambience of the nether is, like, mildly nerve-wracking. Oh, straight tunnels are so much better. Like, <laughs> you don't realise how nice it is to have a straight tunnel to jump down. Okay, so here we are at spawn. This is, like... This would be, like, where I would return to... Um, if I, like, if my bed didn't exist properly, and I think, yeah, I think this is, this is the spawn point of the world, um, which is where I spawned when I started the world. Um, but yeah, so as, as you can see, this used to be, well, you, you can't see what it look, used to look like, but this used to be a hill, um, and I have since leveled the hill because... You know, spawning, if I suddenly reappeared here, um, I need to, like, basically guarantee that I won't just come to an untimely demise. Ah, I think this is back home. But anyway, I think it's safe to say that Minecraft works. And I'm getting, uh, what? What is it? Yeah, like 300 FPS. That's definitely possible. Considering I wouldn't even notice anything above 144. <laughs> okay, right. To be honest, it was probably entirely excessive of me to get, like, a monitor that can refresh faster than 60 FPS. But, you know, I had the budget left, so... What are those? That these things that were the things I was jumping on. Um, they're lily pads. Um, can I have some more stored up in a chest somewhere? Yeah, here we go. So they're basically like you place them in water, and then they act as stuff you can stand on. So I could like make a load. Um, except I have them set up so that. Oh, yeah, so apparently Twitch, as, the, as in the platform, uh, the, the monsters are, <laughs> uh, they're zombie piglins. They used to be called zombie pigmen, and then just, like, the nether update changed them. They're literally the same, they just look different. Um, they don't attack you unless you punch them, so I just, like, steer clear of them. <laughs> but they are, like, they're properly scary because, like, 
if you so much as punch a single pigman, they'll all just be like, and then just all come after you. And it's, <laughs> it's like the worst. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I was building a storage system, which is wanting to build a storage system in, at spawn, which is why I have tons and tons of chests here. Um, how's the iron farm? Yeah, I have like a bit of desert over here. In fact, we could probably waste a firework rocket and fly. So I, I've like lit up this desert area so that nothing spawns. Unless I want it to. And so I have this like nice farming area. And this is an iron farm as well. Which are like completely overpowered since they updated how um, villages work. Oh, only three stacks. That's not very much. Okay, well, let's take all this out anyway. Uh, I have a kind of fetish for, like... <laughs> making everything look nice, which is probably why I've done so little in, what is it, like, oh, there's a, uh, statistics, game time, there's, like, a game time somewhere that tells you how many days I've spent playing Minecraft. Yeah, time since last death and time played are both the same, and they're both about three days, which is kind of scary, <laughs> but, you know. Clear these up. Uh, okay, so oh, they're food. They go in here. So okay, well, so this definitely works. I can definitely stream with this. How is the like video quality okay? Um, ooh, it's. Is it really streaming at seven twenty p? Is that actually, have I just been streaming at 720p the whole time? Uh, stream output video. Yes! Bruh! Bruh! Oh, my days. Okay, well, uh, so <laughs> OBS is configured, of course, to downscale my video. So I can't stream at anything more than 720p without stopping. Um, Anyway, that, that's fine. Uh, now, another test is how well does it deal with Steam? Come on, Steam. Hold on, have I not quitted Minecraft? Oh, no. Here we go. Uh, kill. Oh, I really want, don't want to corrupt my world. Let's... <laughs> Copy twiddle that dot. Well, that was fun. Let's copy it into my home directory. Oh, bruh. Okay. Yeah, dash R. Right, now I, um, can kill Minecraft. Game crashed, cry, okay. All right, got too many things open. Right, library, specifically, let's see how well, yeah, let's first try Hollow Knight. Uh, because Hollow Knight is relatively Oh, yeah, people have insane game times. I, I do want to play Factorio, actually. It's just that, um... Aha, right.
I need this to be quieter. Okay. Ah, okay, the game is noticeably slower. Hmm, this is weird, it shouldn't be. Oh, that was silly, okay. Um. Can I turn the video settings? No, it's still just running at a really low frame rate though, that's the thing. So it is just running at a low frame rate, that it seems. Hold on, wait, I didn't even mean to go this way. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, okay, well, I think we can conclude that Hollow Knight is borderline unplayable. Now is the acid test of, can it play the Talos pr Oh, I haven't, did I download the Talos Principle? Right. Well, because I, so I actually haven't finished the Talos Principle as a game and it's pretty cool. God, it's really loud. It's like... <laughs> this is really funny. We can like... I need to change my volume. I'm just like... Oh, that's better, okay. This is, this is a less than ideal frame rate. Uh, well, I'm I'm just saying how well different games run um, whilst streaming, so that I can like see Are which you still stuff doing I can your stream. Live stream. I am. Okay, well, when you when you fancy dinner's ready. Don't cool. Worry. Yeah. Um, my brother had a like um, F FPS counter. Show FPS. Here we go. Right. Hold on, so... So the game is running...
Right, here's another idea. If we stop screen capturing and instead do a straight window capture. No, it's this faster. Oh, this is better. Okay, right. Now I understand what is going on. Uh, and my... Okay. Nice, okay. So this seems to work. Oh my word, the load times are so fast. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, so this is definitely playable. I think I've done all the puzzles in this level anyway. Hold on, you can't see me anymore. That's not how it's supposed to work. No. Ta-da! I'm back. Okay, yeah, so this seems to be working fine. Right, I think that is everything I wanted to test. Oh yeah, and of course the thing gets confused. No. Yeah. Oh, yes, actually it might. Because the thing is, I'm like super confused by why, um, yes, I think Hollow Knight would also run like this. Um, Still judgerier than usual, though. Oh no. Okay, I need more volume now that everything is back to level. Oh, this is better. Okay, now it doesn't. Oh, this is... Uh, is it smoother? Okay, it's not... It's not as smooth as when I'm just playing on my own. Let's see if we... I mean, the acid test is to attempt... Bruh. I mean, of course my platforming is usually better than that. Right. Oh yeah, it's definitely... It gets definitely harder to control at this frame rate. I mean, it, right, so I could play it like this, um, but I don't think it would be 
Um, yeah, I don't know why the, the devs let you <laughs> hit enemies through walls. It just seemed like so crazily overpowered. Yeah, the game is really janky at this frame rate. Hello, me. I mean... Yeah, okay, let's... Do we... Do we attempt to fight the traitor lord? No, I don't think there's... Gonna be any luck. Um, okay. Well, that was... Interesting experiments. Anyway, okay, I think... Oh, the, the thing has stopped. Let's switch back to screen capture. Um, yeah, okay, I think that... That was a useful testing. Um... I mean, like, yeah, I'll probably stream on Twitch for gaming and leave YouTube just for programming because, uh, you know, like, otherwise people will get super confused. Like, both channels won't, like, know... Like, the viewers of both... Yeah, they, they need to do B2 separate things anyway. I'm tired, I'm rambling. And on that merry note, I think that should be it for tonight. So I'll see you guys next week. I Yeah, so also I will be there will be a stream next week but uh i'm ringing for like uh, ringing online so like I, I ring church bells it's one of my hobbies and um like obviously covid lockdown stuff you can't go and ring actual tower bells because that requires being together and that's not allowed right now right now so i'm doing a whole bunch of online ringing uh, for like six or so hours <laughs> on next Oh, a week today. Uh, so that's going to be a bit crazy. Uh, so I will stream, but no guarantees of how sane or... Uh, <laughs> how sane I'll be. I might just be really tired and, like, not be able to do anything. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Martin, if you want to implement XML, then you're very welcome to. I'm quite happy not to. Um, so, yes, I'm going to call it there. So, see you next week. Bye!